Music is powerful for a multitude of reasons, including it's, you know, acts as a soundtrack to your life, um, and it can be, uh, be as a, a background for different times and different places, but it can also be um, healing in ways, too. People with, like, Alzheimer's are able to recall songs from their past and, like, heal a lot. And that's pretty amazing. And not only that, it gives me and a lot of other people who play music and are musicians a lot of uh, relief and joy and all kinds of positive brain functions. And I'm actually reading a book right now that's about science of the brain and what happens when you play music. And there's a lot of uh, neurological action going on when you're playing a musical instrument. And that helps you develop your brain and has been proven to do a lot of beneficial things for your health. So I think it's definitely something that is worthwhile and is very powerful in a lot of different ways. I think I come from like old school music. I used to listen way before I was introduced to folk music. I was introduced to like Frank Sinatra and Billie Holiday and, and big band music. <clears throat> so the Tim Pan Alley stuff. And I, I realized really young, and I've even talked to people about this, in some of my earliest memories, of why songs worked. And it was because of the incorporation of the music and the lyric, and how they were wed. And that's why I really spend a lot of time really working hard on melodies, so that you can... Melody is what can... is, is the accelerant for the lyric. You know, it's what puts it in your bloodstream. If it's just a lyric, it, it's more like a poem. <clears throat> and to me, the music is the emotion of, of the song. It's not, it has to be married to the lyric. And um, like somebody came up to me today, I just did a, a Q and A, and I played The Long Road, and he came up and he was crying after the show. He said, my wife just got diagnosed with cancer the other day. And he said, so he was a guy that had requested it. <clears throat> And he said, and when I lost my parents, that's the song that I listened to. So that's what music's supposed to do. It does it for me. I mean, there are songs that I cannot get through without bawling my eyes out. Um, I look at, at music much more as, as that, as a sentimental or an encouraging thing, rather than something that evokes anger. I think that uh, music combines an emotional landscape with an overlay of words that can bring um, a deeper experience and sort of overall um, emotional quality with understanding. You can have, you can listen to a piece of music and not understand anything that they're saying, and you can be moved. Um, you know, uh, listening to the Fardo laments. Uh, you know, these beautiful Portuguese songs where you know there's something terribly tragic happening, but you don't understand what they're saying, but you, your heart is breaking after you're listening to it. And then, um, you know, you can listen to Another Girl on Another Planet and you're like, you know, totally um, excited and alive and, you know, sort of energized, and you can listen to something else and, um, you know, it, it will change your mood, you know, it will bring you up or it will bring you down, but I think it's, um, it's the combination of music and lyrics that I find most powerful when you're trying to understand something and the music with the lyrics sort of crystallise something really special. And, um, I guess my thoughts about music are that it's very valuable, that I hope that everyone has music in their life in some way, and it expresses an inner soul, an inner musicality that is 
very private in some ways, very intimate, and I think it's a really cool thing to be able to share something that's just from a page and in your mind through an instrument and out to somebody else is pretty amazing. Because, I mean, this is a piece of wood with horse hair. This is a, a, a beautiful wooden body with silver lined strings. It's a very strange apparatus, but it's to, it's, it's been refined over years to create these. So I did a program this summer called Village Harmony. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's um, it's focusing on focused on folk music singing and um, basically the teen program, which is what I did, is uh, you go and you spend a week rehearsing, like seven hours a day, rehearsing, and then you go on the road for two weeks and you perform all around New England with you know these twenty other kids um, and three adult leaders who are trained in there respective folk fields, um, generally have like specialties, but you know, um, sometimes jack of all trade, usually alums of the camp. Um, and, and that I think was probably one of the most powerful music experiences of my life because it wasn't about, it wasn't about the performance, it was about being in the room with people and singing with people and connecting with them on a really, really emotional and physical basic level. I don't know if you like when you sing with people your heartbeats sync up sometimes um, and like that happened I'm sure it happened um, and I actually this past weekend I went to um, the, like there's a year group for the, the same program I went to year group this past weekend and they asked, they asked us asked us a similar question and my friend and I talked about it and so much of music is just about the connection um, and it's about healing and it's about being there with people and it's not it's not about it's not even about creating something new or original or selling records or performing it's just about being there with people and like feeling the history of music and what it can do Pete Seeger told us a little bit before he died that if the world is still here in a hundred years that he thinks that a big reason will be because of singing. Uh, not people singing on their own or listening to people singing on the radio or TV, but singing with each other. And he spent his whole life uh, encouraging people to sing with each other because he thought that was um, very important for what was happening in the world. Um, he liked to teach people songs from different backgrounds, different cultures, different languages. It was amazing at his concerts that he would get people speaking in languages that they never knew during the concert. Um, and it's been our experience that when people sing with each other, it does something in their hearts. It does something between them. It creates community. It creates hope. It gives them a sense of empowerment to make changes in their life and in the world that they maybe didn't experience before. I think this is why when you see how children respond to music, um, especially younger kids, it's like music is a different language. They feel the rhythm, they want to express themselves, they want to move their bodies. And I think sometimes our culture um, and the experiences that we're, we're told as young people kind of keep us from really feeling that kind of interaction. And music is a language that helps our hearts connect with each other. So in the work that Peter and I do, we see phenomenal experiences and we experience it ourselves that music really does bind us together and it helps us feel better and connect with, with humanity and with each other. I don't know, I think just like it's, its power can't be understated. Um, 
It's pretty life-changing stuff. <laughs> um, and I think that oftentimes, especially in a high school atmosphere, and I, I grew up playing the violin, so I was in an orchestra atmosphere a lot, where seating matters, you know, if you're first chair or second chair, um, first violin or second violin, um, and in chorus, you know, who gets solos and who, etc. Um, and I, and I, and I think that the best thing to do, and this is something that I'm learning more and more after having been in those atmospheres for a lot of my life, is that what makes music powerful isn't the competition and it isn't the um, being the best, as cliche as it sounds. It's just, it's just loving the people that you're performing with and loving the music that you're performing. And that sounds very like, course, it's all sing kumbaya and hold hands, but I mean, in a way, that is sort of what I'm saying, you know. I think that because it is so close to the human voice, it has a familiarity and a wistfulness and a melancholy that gets past people's defenses of their the walls they've built up and sort of melts their heart. Uh, I think that also just the, the tone in which it vibrates, the way in which it vibrates, to me is very intimate because it vibrates right next to my heart, the way a cello sits on the body. And so playing the cello is a bit of a full body vibrational experience in a way that a violin might not be quite as much being up here and at the chin. Um, I'm sure the double bass is, in, you know, but even that is held in a, a different way. So I do think that there is a power to the vibration of a cello that might be unique. I wouldn't say better or worse, but unique. <laughs> transcends so many, transcends everything really. I mean, um, you could be, especially rhythm, I think in general, um, transcends all sorts of cultures and languages, but even melodies as well, um, they transcend, you know, borders. Um, everyone can relate to it. Um, you know, if I play this chord that sounds nice and happy, everyone can feel that. Um, I think it's a way of um, bringing a movement or bringing people together. Um, yeah, again, it transcends. You don't need to have. You don't have to speak the same language. You don't need to, um, you know, share a race, gender, any type of identity. Um, you know, you could just love the same type of music because it sounds good to your ears, and um, that's why I think it's so powerful. It's it's really incredible. It's uh, it's something that it's like the soundtrack to life. You know, you can't you can't have life without music because music is so emotional that when you add it to different scenes and different places and different times in your life, you're you're really enhancing whatever that emotion is. It makes your life kind of run like a movie. You know? Thank mm -hmm. you.